Oh, what are these? So these are artist trading cards. I bought these back when these things were popular. So I was like a teenager and I never really used them. So I thought it'd be fun to finally do that. Oh, I guess I did use them. Interesting. <laughs> I've brought together a few tools I thought would be useful for the job. You know, including this sponge. Sponge isn't important. I've actually never read this. Artist trading cards are miniature pieces of art that are traded around the world. Artists create, trade, and collect art and organize swap events, either in person or online. The only official rule for ATCs, artist trading cards, that's the cool lingo for artist trading cards, is that they are 2.5 inches by 3.5 inches, which these are. So if you've ever wanted to make your own, all you have to do is just cut out a piece of paper or apparently there's no rule you can cut out a piece of wood. You could draw on a sponge, but not the sponge. It's the wrong size. It breaks the rules. And I have quite a few of these left. So I thought it would be fun just to draw like some of my original characters on these and create like trading cards. I think it'd be fun to put like, you know, the name of the character and make it look, I don't know, you know like a card, trading card situation. I've also got my sketchbook here because I think it would be handy to make these look better if I have like paper I can go off the edge with. And also the thumbnail. I think the first one I want to do is wheels. So let me try and create a little box that's similar proportions to this card. And I actually, I guess it wasn't in this sketchbook, must have been in my last sketchbook. I was actually planning out some kind of like cards and I was having wheels kind of bent over tying her roller skate because then it kind of fits inside these dimensions and also shows like one of her most recognizable attributes which are her roller skates. It would be cool if it like a card comes out this way and then it says her name and oops can't spell <laughs> something like this and then maybe I'll make some more for like her gang. I kind of want to keep them simple because obviously this is a very small canvas we're working with. Ooh, what if she has a backpack so it can show her skateboard? And then lastly, can't forget scooped. So I'm not sure how to incorporate her rollerblades. This one might be a little tricky. We could do a sideways card and kind of fit something more like this. What's cool about creating thumbnails that kind of like roughly outline the shape of your canvas is that you can go outside of them. So if you realize, oh, you like liked this area better, I can kind of move it and then I can get a good justification of what it's gonna look like. Whereas if you actually draw directly on the canvas for your first sketch and you realize, oh, I wanna move them up, it's too late, you know? You have to erase the whole thing. What if she's got holding her roller skates? That way, hey, look, like I was saying, we can move it over here and then you can have a better view of these skates. So now we know we want the face further to the left on the page when we draw directly on the paper. By the way, these aren't their real names. <laughs> They're nicknames. Let's just, this, I really like this pose, so I kind of want to deal with that one. I think I'm also, wait, if I turn the body a little so I can see the skates more, kind of like this. Does that look any good? Which one do I like better? Because right off the bat, I like that one better because it just turned out better faster. But that doesn't mean it's the better idea. I think this one showcases her face a little bit more. So I kind of want to go that route. Right, so now all we have to do, since we did all the groundwork here. So I know the face kind of goes here. We want those skates here. And then we want like the name here. I might shrink the name down some more so that there's more room. And I also kind of want a border of some kind. It doesn't have to be thick. I just want it to kind of be there, you know? <laughs> you guys want a second camera angle? <laughs> so now all we have to do is kind of just replicate the pose. Make sure we lay down the same groundwork so that the pose isn't too flimsy. Got like the body would be there, heads here. Scoot has kind of a heart-shaped face is what I would describe it. And each of these characters actually based off a shape. She's based off hearts. She's based off a star, but her face ends up being kind of more of a rectangle. And then wheels is based off of circles. I don't know if you've noticed it, but it helps me kind of keep their characters separate. And I feel like it helps make them each look like their own individual. So she has like a heart. All her accessories are heart-shaped. See, I like having this paper behind it because I can kind of go off if I need to. And then I can also figure out where this arm's gonna go. And then we can draw her skates. Shoes are hard enough to draw on feet. So <laughs> a 
We'll see how this goes. Now there's a lot of weird space here, so I think I'm gonna try and turn the skates a little bit more to fill the space. Also, her body seems really small compared to that one. And she also has a heart on her shirt. Hopefully we can squeeze that in there. It really comes down to those skates, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I wanted them in the car. This is this is my fault. So if I want the rollerblades kind of filling up this area. I'm kind of trying to break it down into really simple shapes. But then this is where the wheels would be. And you have like that thing that holds the wheels together. And then if you they usually have like you know the buckles. Do they have one here? Maybe. And then ties there. You just need to kind of add enough details to where they look like skates. A little section that like goes over the wheels. Like this. Like this. Hey! I like it! <laughs> How often do you say that? Now we just need the other one. But the other one's in the background, so we could probably get away with it being kind of, um... What's that called? When you fill it in. <laughs> kind of like that. So now it looks like there's two skates. <laughs> but I really only had to draw one. So I've got some Ohu markers for some nice, really bold, saturated things. And then I have my Copic markers for some lighter tones. Now her design is kind of like pink and turquoise. Probably gonna go with the uh, turquoise green light. If the turquoise is gonna be bold, we're gonna need a more pastel pink. Ooh, I like that. So maybe these two next to each other. Just need to erase everything lightly. Goodbye sketch. It was nice knowing you. Add some quick line art. Let me give her a little heart earring. For her face, I kind of want to use a more subtle color. Way hopefully it won't look so crazy. And maybe it'll blend into the lips a little more. I just need to erase some of this pencil so we can do the marker on top of it. Oh, I forgot elbow pads. Can I make that work without looking really dumb? Not really. I'm gonna have to, it's too important. So I'm gonna color her first and then I'll choose the colors for the rest of the card after that. Try not to go past that edge where the text is gonna go. Her skates are mostly white actually, except for some green and some pink. Oh, and this is actually gray. I need a gray. It's a nice neutral gray. Mm, it's going well so far. Then we can use that pale turquoise light for the turquoisey bits. I guess it was kind of dumb to color those in pink. Oh well. She looks a little mad. I don't know where I went wrong there. <laughs> Probably the eyebrows. Bright green wheels. Oh, and then the laces can be green too. Oh, well, this heart's supposed to be green, but I think I'm gonna leave it white for now. I'm gonna use raw umber for the hair. And it actually gets lighter on the end, so I'm gonna switch it over to the potato brown when we get to her ends. Be careful and try to color those in. Try not to go outside the lines. This is where those brush tips go in really handy. Ooh, that blended really well. Switch back to potato brown. Potato brown is just that perfect orangey red brown and I love it. And then we can use the raw umber for her eyebrows. The cool thing about dark colors is you kind of fix where you messed up with the line art. I'm gonna try layering some colors. I don't have the exact color I'm looking for, so it's up to me to make it. I could start with that and then maybe use one of the more saturated browns for like, I don't know, see that's becoming more gray as I, as I watch it fade, so that's not gonna work either. That one might work. I'm gonna take E25 and uh, we'll start with like some of the areas you won't notice as much. That's kind of a tip. Don't start with the face if you're unsure about the skin tone because everyone will notice it. Actually, that might, oh, I like, okay, that's actually working really well. I don't think I even need to mix that. Now, sometimes even in swatches, you can't really get a good idea of what it'll look like until you try it in the actual drawing. I think I'll use the same color, layer it again. The blush could probably even, not sure, let me try it on. Get a little pink to around the eyes. Can blend that out, maybe even around the nose. Okay, I really like that. That worked, that worked way better than I thought it would. 
I think I'm gonna add pink to the ends of the hair too. Cause they're like the only part of this drawing that looks orange. Now looking at it, I kind of want the border to be this turquoise. So I'm gonna try and actually use the chisel tip for this and try to get a perfect straight line. Voila. <laughs> now I think I'll color in this whole section with it as well. And then draw with a white gel pen, her name. I just need to fill this all in. It's kind of like a slanted Polaroid. It's kind of cute. <laughs> it's one of those ones I have that's running low. Now, let me try and use a white gel pen for some little accents and such. It wouldn't be super obvious because I use such a light color for the background, but we can try outlining her. There we go. <laughs> I kind of want to, once that dries, repaint the heart with the dark turquoise. Yes, I do like that better. <laughs> Good thing because it's permanent. So there's the first one. I want to go ahead and do at least another one here. And uh, since we still don't know what wheels is going to look like, we can do decks. I want to keep in mind that her face is a little bit more rectangular. You know, I don't really want to give her pigtails. Wheels has pigtails. Helmet. Now there's a lot of extra space up at the top, so I wonder if I can just make the helmet bigger. Does that solve my problems? Oh, we need the straps for the backpack. <laughs> she has a two-tone mullet, which is why this little floof coming out from the helmet is going to be a different color than the rest of her hair. Alright, so just need to follow the same steps, obviously. Now her color scheme is turquoise and yellow. Yeah, I feel like I always draw her the worst. <laughs> kind of sucks to be Dex. I guess I have the least emotional attachment to her. <laughs> Maybe it means it's time for a redesign. Now my best, should have spent a little bit more time on that, but <laughs> let's just quickly color her in, as well as her bottom layer of hair, which we might have to layer up a couple times because it's supposed to be black. Then we need that turquoise, as well as I guess a shirt maybe. Fine. Let me use one of those lighter turquoise. Green mist or whatever. Moon white. Color in some more. The green sections. Oh, I meant to color that in yellow. What was I thinking? Uh oh. But I like to not use straight black for anything because it can be really harsh. Let me try this neutral gray six. For some reason there was green on the actual ruler so it left lines so uh, yeah i can't do anything about that all right i don't really like this one so i could kind of feel myself rushing myself with this one and i really don't like the way it turned out and instead of pushing myself to make the wheels one i think i'm going to take a little bit of a break and come back to it and try it with some fresh eyes and maybe get something that looks good like this one <laughs> i've kind of t learned that when I'm feeling art blocky, it's because I'm rushing myself and I have weird expectations for myself. And that's when it kind of looks meh. So yeah, I'm gonna come right back, rejuvenated and ready to draw wheels. Ooh, okay. So I think where I went wrong, now that I'm looking at this with fresh eyes, is that I think I spent half as much time on this as I did on this. And that made a huge difference. You can kind of see this one's just a lot better planned out. And this one, it's kind of like hiding a lot of the anatomy mistakes with hair. So what we need to do, I'm gonna actually trace this so we can work exactly in the right dimensions. And I think that'll definitely help me out. Maybe these uh, random streaks will <laughs> inspire me. I'm gonna make these little pigtail holder circle things bigger. This is such a popular girl pose and I'm not sure that suits her personality. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm getting back on track here. This doesn't really suit wheels, but it was fun to draw. <laughs> I really like the kind of flow of the drawing. Think I got distracted. It all started, I was trying to just kind of block out some of these sh strokes so you could see her face better. And then I just went on a Posca pen frenzy. So like, let me see. Let's see if it fits in there. Oops. <laughs> I'm making a mess and I'm having an absolute blast. 
I use this messy one. So we're just gonna have to try and copy it ourselves. I think I actually want to like tilt her head a little though. Those fists up here, her other hands down here. Try to use a guideline for the eyes even though. When does that actually help me line them up? <laughs> this face as much as that one. So I need to try and see what the difference is. Okay, it's definitely not the same drawing, but that changes things up, makes it more fresh, right? <laughs> just lightly erase the face. Try and get these proportions. I really like the ones up here. It's getting really stiff. I don't know if it's because I'm trying to keep it all contained, but it needs to be free. Maybe with that in mind, if I lightly erase it and then draw over top again, I'm gonna just kind of try and do a little bit of that. Like it looks like she's dancing. Let's just make sure I'm allowed to draw outside of the frame. <laughs> this has a lot more movement to it, which I really like. Letting myself be messy with this, I think, is definitely helping. I feel like it's becoming looser as I go. And when I get really stiff is when the art turns out a little bit more like that one. So I just need to let myself breathe. Yeah, I think this is gonna work. Okay, I'm getting excited. That's a good sign. So let's go ahead and lighten up the lines again. That's better <laughs> for now. And since I spent so much time on the sketch, this should come really easy, hopefully. <laughs> Someone asked the other day, why do you always draw the two middle fingers as one piece? And that's because five fingers is just too complicated for me. I like to simplify it down into four and one just really big one so it doesn't look like she's missing a finger. And sometimes I'll even draw a little line in there to kind of hide my uh, problems. <laughs> now for this hand, I have one good hand so the odds of me getting two good hands in one drawing are very slim. Ah! It's not terrible. <laughs> I'll take it. The other day when I drew her, where is that? When I used only Ohu markers, I didn't really have the right skin tone for her, but I love everything else. So I'm gonna use those same colors, which I believe was potato brown for the hair. Ugh, that's such a beautiful color. I love potatoes and I love this color. I'm adding some extra like little streaky deekies to make the hair look more like, I don't know, hair. You can let me know if you think it's working. Let's use sunflower. Yeah, it looks about right. But let's start light. I feel like I've always drawn her with really, really light skin. I mean, not always. I've experimented, obviously. I think it just suits her because she wears such bold colors. This might be a little on the too light side. I just realized how far to the right her nose is. I'm so sorry. This is barely beige. Oh, I could like blend it out with the other skin tone I had. That might look kind of cute. Redden up her skin tone a little bit. Bring a little life. Oh, that's not the color I wanted. I'm sorry. I wanted this one. I would have just wrote it. And some lips. Marigold for the smiley face. Thank you, brush tip. Yeah, just a little shading to the white. Now I definitely want to use a pink border. I can use pastel pink. Use the chisel side. Make sure this has not got any green on it <laughs> this time. Actually gonna flip this over and use this pink for her blush. So it fits into the color scheme better. Do I have like a pastel pink that I can use for the background? That is very close to the skin tone and I don't think I even use this for her. I could try using this. I'm gonna add a border around her with this Posca pen. Kind of interesting. Probably should have used more of a yellow color for the background, but I'll take it. Let's use this writer name. There we go. Okay, this one turned out a lot better than the last one. I am very glad that I decided to take a break. And that's okay, you can always take a break, guys. So here we have our three artist trading cards. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you drew along in your sketchbook or made your own artist trading cards. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye! Can you believe I used all of these markers for these three little things? <laughs>